couple of things that I want to um, share with you first. Let me get, I think I've got this sorted out. Got some good practice a couple of weeks ago. All right, let's see here. Hey, there we go. All right, first thing I came across or that I wanted to talk about today uh, was a quick blog post from Yannick Reinhardt um, on how to actually put together um, some batch calls or, or loop through a number of things that you want to interact with when calling Microsoft Graph and batching those things uh, in order to uh, see some performance gains, uh, get, get a response a little bit faster. Um, there we go. I think I accidentally clicked on his homepage there. Um, so quick post here, uh, but very useful, especially as you start to engage with more users, more groups, more devices, or just generally more resources when interacting with Graph. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I shared this out with everybody. Uh, thank you, Yannick, for putting this together. Uh, another quick tip that I saw gain a little bit of traction on uh, Twitter earlier this week um, a post from Niall Brady. Um, I have noticed this in the past and just sort of grumbled about it and moved on. Uh, but if you have ever noticed an issue where, um, an icon just disappears from your taskbar, from one of your taskbar shortcuts on Windows 11, um, Niall reached out on Twitter about this and it turned out, um, <clears throat> Andrew Blackbur here, uh, responded asking if Niall had an executable on his desktop. And sure enough, he did. Um, and after removing those executables and uh, rebooting his computer, that fixed the shortcut issue. Uh, so I wanted to throw this out there. Um, it was awesome to see a solution because I hadn't spent any time on it except to just, uh, you know, like I said, grumble and go about my day. Uh, but it was, it was kind of an annoying thing. So uh, thank you, Andrew and Niall, for sharing this information earlier this week. That's very helpful. And of course, something that I have to talk about today, as I'm sure many of you heard, Windows 11 24H2 was released. Uh, thank you, Mike, uh, who's in the chat. I know that you pointed this out as well as, uh, many others here. Um, uh, but 24H2 came, is coming with quite a few, um, interesting improvements. Um, a couple of things that I specifically wanted to point out, even though this is not an exhaustive list, that's why I have this blog post up here for you to share or for you to review. Um, but this is a pretty cool one here. Uh, lapse policy improvements and new automatic account management feature. Um, this is awesome. We've talked about this here on Office Hours a little bit, where if you are using um, uh, Windows Laps and you want to use a custom account, you had to ensure that you were creating that custom account um, somehow through a remedi remediation, through a PowerShell script, uh, through a Win32 app, through a configuration item, or something like that. Uh, now with 24H2, <clears throat> that new that account will be created automatically for you. Um, more to come here on this, I think. I mean, since this is so fresh, um, I and others are going to be doing some testing on this. Uh, but I'm very excited to see that. Um, generally, support for Wi-Fi 7, I think that's a good thing, uh, as long as you have a device that supports it. And then uh, earlier on, um, in an earlier version of Windows 11, maybe 22H2, we actually got the ability to natively open 7-Zip and TAR archives. And um, now we're actually able to create those archives natively in Windows. Uh, so I'm always excited about these things getting built in natively. Um, so just another thing to, to uh, take a look at. Plenty of other improvements and changes as you see here in this blog post. Um, but you can go ahead and start testing this. Um, I know that this is available in Visual Studio downloads for sure. Uh, last I checked, it was not available in uh, VLSC or rather the M365 Admin Center yet, um, but that may have changed. Usually it takes a couple of days um, 
<clears throat> for for those two to even out so that we have consistency across the, the platforms. Uh, I hadn't double checked yet, but we can actually do that while we're talking about it. Um, I believe that the wrong one. Sorry about that. I believe that the feature update policies in Intune were updated already as well. But let's verify that real quick. Uh, uh, let's go to Windows, Updates, Feature Updates. There we go, 24H2 already available. So that is fantastic. I will be creating and deploying that uh, later this evening for sure. Uh, so great stuff there. Oh, awesome. I see a comment here from Mark uh, uh, in the chat over on YouTube. Uh, pulled it from the M365 Admin Center earlier this afternoon. Awesome. Thank you for that, Mark. So it looks like it should be available everywhere now. Um, and on the note of 24H2, Gary, I see that you are here in the chat. Uh, the OSD PowerShell module has been uh, updated uh, and includes OSD cloud support for Windows 11 24H2. So thank you, Gary, uh, and anybody else that was involved in this. That is very quick and fantastic work um, on your guys' part to get that out for the community. That is awesome. Uh, so I'm going to post not only David's tweet here, uh, but also the PowerShell gallery link um, to the OSD PowerShell module. So kudos to you guys on that one. Thank you so much. Um, also had another comment in here. It looks like uh, uh, somebody else was also able to pull that 24H2 ISO. So that is fantastic. So all around good stuff as usual this week.